My name is Mark Walsh from Integration Training. My specialism as a trainer is looking how the body relates to leadership. Part of my job is to look at the movement, the posture, the attention, the breathing, those kind of things of business leaders and make some assessments of their personality, their strengths, their weaknesses based upon that. This is often assessed by their peers as being very, very accurate, sort of um, surprisingly, almost disturbingly accurate at times. And just for fun once, we looked at people's walking along the beachfront in Brighton, just for a few seconds, stopped them and said, here's what I see about your personality, how accurate would you say it was? And we did this with about 30 people, and the, the average rating we got was 8.5 out of 10. So just um, intuitively, it appeals to a lot of people. There's also some research coming out now that relates to this kind of work by the likes of uh, Dr. Peter Lover in the UK and Amy Cuddy at Harvard. So in this video, what I'm going to do is analyse the posture and movement of the candidates. It's not so much body language, it's something called embodiment, which is a bit deeper than that. Uh, it's also a bit harder to fake, so it can be useful for looking at politicians. I've deliberately not heard any of the policies of either Obama or Romney. I don't have a TV, I've kept away from newspapers, I've not looked at anything on social media to try and be as objective as possible. Now, of course, you all have biases. Um, by way of transparency, I'm a reasonably left-leaning person, though um, I also run a business and I have family in the military, so I think I have some appreciation of the right as well. So I've really made an effort to be as fair and objective as possible. So while watching the presidential debate, I actually watched it with the sound off so I could just look at their bodies well, rather than hear their policies. So let's start with what they have in common. So um, they, they both manage their bodies very tightly. They, they both have a certain stiffness, and I think a lot of that comes from they work with body language experts, they work with people who are um, looking at how they are in the media. And what a lot of both of them do is sort of close off a lot of their bodies, so they're not particularly moving very much. The other thing is, because of all their body language training, they'll make a lot of gestures which are a little bit inauthentic. One might also say they're both reasonably disembodied generally, which means my sense is they aren't particularly aware of their bodies compared to, say, um, someone that does yoga or spends a lot of time farming or working with their body. So let's start with Romney. Um, Overall, not too bad. He has a um, pretty positive bearing, pretty positive posture for a leader. There's a certain solidity of being that he has, reasonable st stability as well, groundedness. Um, yeah, kind of an upright bearing of one might imagine from a leader. So um, certainly on first impression, a pretty positive embodiment that I see him having. Um, a little stiff, um, not necessarily a bad thing for someone from the right to have that, that certain uh, inflexibility, as it were. Pros and cons to any of these embodiments that I'll mention, they, have, they all have two sides. So compared to, say, Bush, Romney actually seems a lot more comfortable in that um, solid kind of leadership stance. He seems like it does come more naturally to him, despite some of the training he's clearly had on top of that. The other thing that's apparent with him is a certain charm. He has, um, certainly from a British point of view, he has an American extroversion, what we call wit. So this is how we um, take up space this way. Obama's much more narrow. His attention, his posture is much more drawn in. Romney much more wide. There's a sense of um, kind of welcomingness, agreeableness in his head movement, in his smile, in, in many, of those, many of those factors. I can see that he would be liked, certainly from looking at this, um, this debate. One could also say he has a certain shine to him, which is a kind of charismatic, attractive quality. If I was to have some concerns about Romney, um, there seems to be fear in his system, either trying to convey fear or fear himself, particularly in the, in the movement of the kind of head and eyebrows. You take a moment just to feel uh, internally when you're watching him, there's a sense of kind of fear that comes up for me. The other thing that worries me about him is his eyes. His eyes seem kind of cold and glassy and hard. Um, what we could call armouring is the technical term. Um, th that doesn't engender trust to me. And even though the outward appearance is certainly charming and warm, when I look at the eyes, I don't see that. Um, and I tend to trust the eyes more than the outward appearance. Also, there's, there's less of a sense of congruence than Obama. So there's some sense in while different parts of his body are doing different things to his face. And it leaves me, both in analysis and also just intuitively, it leaves me slightly going, I'm not sure if I trust this guy. He seems pretty polished, but how deep does that go? What's this guy really thinking? Whereas kind of a Bama's for his failings, there is a sense of it all, uh, all being together, all being aligned and congruent. The other worry I have with Romney looking at him is there's a, there's a slight sense that he knows a joke and he's not telling anyone. 
there's some sense that he knows a secret that other people don't know or that it's all a game to him. Um, again, that's pretty subtle. It would be hard to put, put my finger on exactly where it was, but again, that's the intuitive hit that I got uh, looking at him. Let's move over to Obama now. So um, again, pretty positive. Um, presidential, upright, this idea of spine, of uprightness. Obama's always had that, that sense of dignity and uprightness. Uh, he's looking a little tired, so a little more squashed than if you look at footage of him from four, four years ago. A little less expansive, and that, that word hope was a big part of his campaign, wasn't it, years ago? And it, it seems now that that quality of hope and expansiveness has become a little tired, a little shrunk. But there's, there's still a pretty good deportment there in terms of the uprightness, the overall leadership presence. Um, again, a little stiff, as I mentioned, a little from the head. So Romney has this kind of uh, sense of being alive in his emotions, in his chest, at least to some extent, whereas Obama can seem like a bit of a talking head at times. Um, I can see why that might alienate a lot of his potential voters. Very clever, but the, you know, the head's very talky. He doesn't always quite face. So Romney faces very clearly. There's a sense of... Um, meeting of for straightforwardness in that way, whereas Obama, I can see he creates an impression of being a little bit slippy, a little bit not quite up front in the fact that he's often off to the side slightly rather than clearly facing. Those things combined may mean that he's less inspiring to people, at least on a surface level, than Romney. The other potential or danger Obama has in his embodiment is seeming superior. Um, often sort of has his chin up like this, like um, that pride is maybe, there's this dignity and this pride going a bit too far. And then um, when he looks down, when the other person's talking, there's a sort of smugness he'll have. And um, that's a shame, because actually I see in his posture a greater humility than that. So um, I, would, I would worry that that would create an impression of arrogance or superiority, which again, maybe wouldn't, um, along with this up quality he has, maybe wouldn't en endear him to the working man. Also in terms of his movement, um, he's kind of sharp and picky in his movements. It's kind of how an intellectual often moves, a very sharp, very precise in his movement, whereas Romney's much more round in his movement, um, which again may alienate certain voters. When you see the two people walking, and I was looking at some other footage other than debate from walking, uh, Obama comes across much better on the walking than Romney. Romney kind of has a sort of stiff, slightly Frankenstein quality and uh, not a real clarity of direction when he moves. Uh, Obama, much more dynamic, much more flexible, um, just a hint of playfulness there, a hint of fun in there. Um, so from, from movement, definitely uh, Obama wins that one. The next thing I notice about Obama, and I want to tackle this area um, sensitively and with respect as it um, could be misinterpreted. Uh, is that he doesn't have the movement and posture patterns that I've seen in African Americans, for, for example, when I was at the University of Chicago, where, where he was. And, and I don't say that as good or bad, I just notice it as something that's there, and it's kind of the elephant in the room, and no one's talking about it. Overall, then, um, on a surface level, on an initial level, I would say Romney wins in terms of his body posture, his embodiment being very presidential, being warming, being engaging. Um, having a real sense of impact and charisma, definitely. Um, looking at it a little bit closer, however, my gut feeling is um, less congruent, less trustworthy than Obama. So um, surface level, Romney wins. On a deeper examination, Obama. Just to finish up, I'd also like to mention Jill Stein. So this is someone I was unaware of recently, and my American friend had asked me to do this video. He said, oh, you have to look at the Green candidate as well. So. Um, I've seen some footage of her. I've never, literally never heard her speak. Um, the footage of her that I saw was much more human than the two we've just discussed. Um, very relaxed, playful, almost childlike, if I would have to say there's a potential weakness there. Um, very forward, future orientated, as one might expect from a kind of someone from Progressive Party that way. Um, a little agitated, not quite as contained. The sense I had is she's playing a game that's much higher than she's yet used to. Um, but very, very likeable, and I imagine when she, she grows, matures and grows into that, that sense of the higher game she's now clearly playing, someone that I would certainly have a lot of like and respect for. So there's my kind of rambling thoughts as an outsider. I hope some of that's been useful. I wouldn't take anything too seriously. It's just the starting point for some discussion. 
Uh, you may, of course, have a different viewpoint, and that's fine. I invite you to put those in the comments. Um, you may have a different intuitive here. I'm, I'm sure I've missed things from the small analysis I've done. Um, I just hope it's a useful starting point for discussion as to what the potential uh, presidents of the United States embody. Thank you.